it's exceptional growth. We're talking 50 plus uh, compounded annual growth rate there. So yeah, definitely a big tick for revenue growth. Hi everyone, today I'm looking at a very interesting small cap company out of Poland called Mobrook. Now, I've been look, trying to look at this company for quite some time now, and it's actually a really difficult company to understand because it's in the waste management industry. And I don't know anything about this industry, so I'm trying to learn as much as I can, try to understand the Poland dynamics to this as well. So there's a fair bit of uh, interesting stuff going on here in this, this company, in this video. I'm gonna do a quite a quick valuation of it, like a high level valuation by looking at a lot of their financials. I'll go through a nine point checklist to do that. And then I will give a valuation at the end of the video plus my opinion. So let's jump in. Now, like I said, I'm doing a very high level approach here and just looking at some basic financial metrics here and gonna give a bit of a valuation. Now, if the company was somewhere in the ballpark of my valuation, then I would go and do a really deep dive into the company and look at as much as possible to understand everything I could. Now, a really good way to understand how to do a deep dive into a company like this, well, I highly recommend going through Hamish Hodder's course. Now, I don't wanna make a course myself. I feel like there's a lot of better courses out there. And the one that I found that I think is the best of all of them is from Hamish Hodder. And he's another Australian YouTuber and I highly recommend checking out some of his content as well to get more familiar. But his course is fantastic. So there's, he's kindly enough given us a discount code for viewers of my channel, just my friends and family essentially, to if you wanna get 30% off, you can use my discount code and you can get access to that course and go through all the examples that he puts together of how to do a deep dive. Now remember, I'm just gonna do this briefly and I highly recommend doing a deep dive and I'll show you why when we get to the end. Okay, so like I mentioned earlier, Mobrook is a waste management company based out of Poland. It's got about a $325 million market cap, depending on which day you're looking at the company. And this investment revolves a lot around the macro factors around Poland and the European Union. See, Poland have to meet these certain recycling standards introduced by the European Union because Poland is part of the EU now. And by 2030, they really need to catch up. I think they have to be uh, landfill neutral or landfill to zero or something like that by 2030. So uh, Sweden, Finland, Germany, Denmark, those countries, as you can see in this graph, they've already got to zero, but Poland is a long way behind. They're only at about 50%. Uh, so they have a lot of catch up to do. And this is where Mobrook comes in. So what Mobrook does is they treat the waste so it doesn't have to go into landfill. They do all the uh, proper incineration, the proper disposal and recycling, everything that needs to be done. That doesn't mean it just goes dumped into a landfill station somewhere. So the other thing that's going on in Poland is because they've had decades and decades of really poor waste management practices back in um, like 30 or 40 years ago, apparently there was just people dumping like really bad chemicals just out in like in the forest and places like that. And what's happened is as people have expanded and farming has expanded, people have started discovering these, what they call ecological bombs. And what's happening is a lot of this uh, chemicals have been seeping into the soil, destroying the soil quality and seeping into the water system. And it's creating a really big environmental problem in a lot of areas throughout Poland. And somebody's got to come in and clean this stuff up. And the government have put in a lot of money to get this cleaned up and it's slowly getting rolled out. And Mobrook have been winning a lot of these contracts. And this has been really accelerating their growth of late. Now, another really interesting point about this business is it is amazingly boring. You don't see many people coming out of college or university wanting to go into the waste management industry. So look, the competition in this space is actually pretty low. Yeah, there's big European players that could come into the market. So it's something that we could, that we'd have to watch out for. But in Poland, it's a very boring business and it's amazingly boring and I love that because it is, makes it really stable and it's a really reliable industry. Look, waste management is as important as food and water. If the rubbish that we put out each day into the skip bins outside, if someone doesn't come and clean that stuff up, it creates this massive big problem in just the communities itself. So look, this is as important as food and water and I love that because it means that this has got a lot, lot of longevity to the business. Now, some of the questions that I have at the moment is, I don't know how big the company could potentially be. And I also don't know how the Polish government can affect the company, but on In Value Investors Club, uh, there is a write-up, a really detailed write-up on the company. That's where I've learned a lot about this company myself. And look, that's a good place to start when you're doing your deep dive. 
All right, now let's turn to the financials and go through my nine point checklist. Firstly, I wanna go check for revenue growth. So obviously we want the business to be growing. And over the past five years, it's grown from 53 million to looks like it's pushing well over 200 million zloty at the moment. That's Polish zloty, that's the currency. So that's a four, nearly five fold increase in five years. That's it's exceptional growth. We're talking 50 plus uh, compounded annual growth rate there. So yeah, definitely a big tick for revenue growth. Now we turn to gross margins. Gross margins are important because if the gross margins are big, it means they have a lot of room for error and they can have bad periods and still be very profitable. So I wanna look for the gross margins above 40% generally. And look, they've always been above, full. there's one year, sorry, of in 2018 where it was 35%, but the last couple of years, it's between 45 and 65%. That's fantastic, we can give that a tick. So next up is return on invested capital or just the return on assets and return on equity measurements. So I'm going to take a look at those with, uh, and I'm wanting these to see these double digits because it means that the management team are reinvesting back in the company to make more money. And it's a sign of good management and a sign of a good business essentially. So look, if I look at return on equity, return on capital, return on assets for the last three or four years, that, that's been double digit, it's been growing, it's been in the last two years, it's been like 50% plus. So that's exceptional. We can give that a tick as well. Now we turn to debt and debt, I think is the most important thing because this is the number one reason why a company could get into trouble. So to check on debt, we go to the balance sheet. So I'm looking at the total current assets, which at the moment is around about 90 million. And I'm comparing that to the uh, current liabilities, which is around about, mm, looks like 36 million for the trailing 12 months. So I just wanna see that current assets significantly above current liabilities, which it is. So the current assets were 90 million. And if I look at the total liability, so that's all of the liabilities, well, they only have $60 million of total liability. So all their cash and short-term uh, assets that they have can actually pay off all of their debts, both short-term and long-term. So that's a fantastically strong financial position to be in. They have no, they have no debt concerns here. They have no problems in, at the moment in this company. And, uh, it means that the, the risk that we're taking is very low now, which is great. Okay, next up is free cash flow. We wanna see this growing because essentially this is what gets returned to us as investors. So the cash from operations minus the capital expenditure is what we look at. So cash from operations has been growing significantly. Five years ago, it was 10 million. Now it's 93 million Zloty. And that's in line with that strong revenue growth. The net income's been growing strong like that as well. So yeah, this is really good to see. And the capital expenditures have been really low. So uh, between one and $2 million a year in CapEx. So the free cash flow has been growing really strong. And yeah, that's great to see. Now, if you are interested in this company and you're thinking of investing, you're gonna need a brokerage account that can access the Warsaw Stock Exchange. Interactive Brokers and Saxo Bank luckily both do. I have links in the description to both. If you wanna go and have a look at Interactive Brokers in particular, you can click the link in my description and go to a demo account and just get a feel for how the platform looks and whether you think you can understand how it all works. It's pretty simple, I think. Uh, the client portal is uh, a fantastic platform to use and uh, it's pretty intuitive. So I really like Interactive Brokers because again, the fees are low, uh, they give you access to international markets and look, they've got a long stable history of They've been around since the 70s. And that's why it's my preferred broker of choice. Okay, next up is shares outstanding. We want this number to be hopefully going down, if not stable. The only problem is I couldn't get enough data on this inf on the shares outstanding number for the in the past. At the moment, I can see it's at 3.5 uh, million shares outstanding, but I can't see anything in the past. So I have to just give that a question mark. I have to do a little bit more digging on that. So that's fine. Next up is insider ownership. And I wanna see the management team have a big stake in the company so that if we do become shareholders, our incentives are aligned with each other. And if I go for, to Mobrook, they actually have uh, the family who started this business. I, I've done a little bit of reading and I found that they are in charge of uh, this Lemisfield in, is investments company and that owns 35% of Mobrook. So they have the family who started this company and who are still running it they have a huge stake in this company, which is great. So that's all I really needed to see. I can give that a tick. Their incentives are in line with the shareholders. Next up is whether there's any super investors invested in the company, because look, I'm not that smart and it'd give me a lot more conviction if someone who I highly respected in the investing community was invested in this company because it's past their filters. 
Now, unfortunately, there aren't any that I can find at the moment, so I had to give that across, but it doesn't mean we can't invest in it, of course. It just means that I'm gonna have to do a lot more work and build up a lot more conviction of my own, and that's okay. Now, last but certainly not least is the price that you're gonna to have to pay. So a good investment is made by the price that you're gonna pay because well, look, you're not gonna pay $20 million for a Ferrari when it's worth $200,000. That's silly, it's a great car, but doesn't make it a good investment, it's a bad idea. So just like when we buy a company, we don't wanna overpay for it, we wanna pay fair value at the highest, at, as their highest price, but hopefully we can pay significantly under fair value. And to do that calculation, I use my uh, discounted cash flow model here. It, there's a link in the description, and this is what it looks like. Now, the growth rates, <laughs> I've already gone ahead and put in all the information here and it comes to a buy price of 215 slotty. Now, the issue here is that the growth rates were pretty hard to predict because the growth of the company has been exceptional over the past five years. Like we're talking 50% plus per annum. Now I've scaled that down to 25% because as a company gets bigger, it just can't grow at those exceptional rates, but the company is still pretty small. So maybe it can still grow at 40, 50% per annum. I don't really know, that's the hard part here. I'm gonna play around with some numbers here, which I'll show you in a moment. I then slowed it down to 10% because predicting out in five years time is really hard to do. So I've slowed that down just to be conservative. I've used a really big discount rate of 30%. Um, that's sort of like what we're aiming to get and 30% incorporates a big margin of safety as well, which I'll play around with in a moment as well. Uh, the multiple, it's in Poland, even if it's growing really fast, it's a Polish company. 15 to 20 is probably fine here. I'm just gonna use 15 to be safe. The free cash flow number that I've grabbed and shares outstanding, their total cash, total debt. So the current price is 360 zloty. And so my buy price at 215 zloty, well, it still needs a fair way to fall if I wanted these, if I think these calculations are correct. Now, let me play around here just to show you what it could look like. Now I could say, okay, well, it's been growing at 50, 60% for the last couple of years. Maybe that slows down just a little bit, but with all the opportunity that they have in Poland to expand and fix all these ecological bombs that are happening and trying to get um, Poland to zero percentage landfill, maybe it can grow at 40% for the next five years and then slow down to, I don't know, 10%. I'll use a discount rate. Look, 30% is very aggressive. Maybe I could just drop it down a tiny little bit to 28. And all of a sudden, with a bit of multiple expansion as well, all of a sudden we're right, we're right in the ballpark right now. So as you can see, there's a, there's a lot of assumptions needing to be made here. That's where going into the doing a deep dive, especially a deep dive like Hamish Hodder would explain in his course, if you, if you really understood the company, I could get better, a more accurate picture on uh, these growth rates. And at the moment, I think that we're probably in the ballpark in terms of price, but I would really want to be confident that I think it can grow in the next five years pretty ex at pretty exceptional rates. I think these numbers here look a little bit better to me just because I can be a bit more conservative. So we're talking 250 zloty, somewhere around that mark there. Maybe anything under 300 zloty would be, would be pretty interesting. Okay, now let me give you my opinion. I think it is a very fast growing company in a very boring space, which I love. Poland is a bit of a hidden market. We're not talking about a US stock here or a Chinese company or even a Japanese company. No one's really looking at the Polish market. So I like that. I think there's that's probably why the valuation isn't too bad. They have really strong financials like across the board. I love how their, uh, especially their debt levels are really manageable. They have a lot of cash. They have strong insider ownership. Everything looks really great from the financials point of view. And I think that price is probably in the ballpark. Um, maybe a little bit less would be nice, but I would have to understand uh, those growth rates a little more, but I think the price is in the ballpark. The thing is, I just don't understand the market, um, that the industry that they're in, I don't really understand that at all. I still don't really understand the business either, so I have to do a lot more research. And yeah, like I've just said, it needs a deep dive and that's gonna take a long time, but I think that's where I can get an advantage over everyone else. If I really understood this particular business, Maybe this is a really interesting opportunity, especially with those return on invested capital, uh, those re especially with those return on investment metrics, uh, the growth rate that it's experiencing, and maybe there is a lot more potential here than I know of. So I think this is a really interesting company. 
I'd love to hear what you think. If anyone out there has done any work on this company, please leave a comment for me. That would be ideal. I'd love to talk more about it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.